Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is how to create a live background scene for your main menu so you don't just have one boring still picture, you can have an actual live scene in it. And this isn't a video, this is an actual 3D scene. So if I were to hit play, this is what you would probably have at the moment, what you're used to normally seeing. So you can see it's just a main menu with a still background image like so. I've just used Firewatch but obviously you'd use something from your actual game most likely. So if I had to close this, I can now show you what we're going to make instead. And that is this. If I hit play, you can see we now have a live 3D background scene instead of a single still image. And you can obviously do whatever you want with this. So you can make your own. I've just got a scene from the marketplace. You can have your characters in there. You can do whatever it is that you want. But this is just a really cool thing to make your game feel a little bit nicer and your main menu feel a little bit more interactive and a bit more gamey and it can help soften the transition from a main menu into your game as obviously this feels like you're already in a 3d environment so what i'll do is i'll close this first of all and then i'll kind of show you what i've done so it's actually incredibly incredibly simple so this will probably be a little bit of a quick video so what we can do is let's open up our main menu that we have currently you can see mine is just simply like this now if you don't have a main menu i do have a video where i go over it in more detail However, I will do something very quick and very brief just to show you as well. Now, in this video, but again, I do have a more detailed video as well if you would like that. So let me go into my UI folder. I'll right-click, go to User Interface, create a widget blueprint, create a user widget, and I'll call this one W underscore for widget, and I'll do Main Menu, and I'll put New. And I'll open this up straight away here. What we're going to do in here straight away is go to the panel, add in a canvas panel, and then what we can do is anything that you want within your main menu. So I just want some easy buttons. So what I'll do is get a vertical box. So you can see we get this here, drag it onto the canvas panel. And then in this box, we want to get a button. So drag that onto the vertical box. And then this button wants some text. So we'll drag the text onto the button. And then we also want to get a spacer. So we'll drag the spacer onto the vertical box. So it goes beneath the button like so. Then we'll select the vertical box, set the anchor point to the middle, Position X and Y to 0, and the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5, just so this is now directly in the middle of the screen, perfectly like so. Then I'll set the size X to 500, and the size Y to 300, so we have something looking a little bit like this. Now, what we're going to do is select the button, and we'll set this to fill, so it fills up the entire box like so. Then we'll select the text, and change this to play, as this is going to be my play button. So I'll also rename my button, sorry, to play underscore btn just so i know what it is and with the text you can also customize the font the color all of that but i'm not going to get into customizing this video today is just about functionality and then you can select the spacer and this is how we can create spaces between the different buttons so i'm going to set the size of this to 0 and 20 so you can see we now have this space here you can make this as big or as small as you want but i'm going to go with actually let's go with 30 perfectly like so now I will select the spacer, the text and the button, hit control C, select the vertical box and hit control V. And now that's going to add it directly underneath it. However, for some reason it's added the spacer in, in the wrong place. It's put it above the button. So what we're going to do is drag the button above the spacer. So, so hold the button and just drag it above the spacer like so. I'm not sure why it did that, but that's how you can easily fix it. And then I'll rename this button to options BTN as that's what I want it to do. And then change the text to also say options or settings, whatever makes most sense for you. And then I'll select just the button this time and copy and paste that onto the box. Renaming this to quit button like so and changing the text over as well. Now you can add as many buttons as you want. But for me, I'm just going to have play options and quit. And what I might do is actually select both the spaces by holding control and spacing both of them. And change the size to 20 as I think that might look a little bit better. And I'll also increase the vertical box to 400 instead of 300 or 350. But again, I'm not going to get too much into the customization. This is purely functionality. So that's how we can create some nice buttons like so. What I'll also do now is add some text onto the canvas panel. Anchor that to the top middle. I'll change this to the title of my game. Mine is just my first game. Very imaginative name, I know. And then what I can do is set the position X to zero as well. So it's in the middle of the screen. And then the anchor point, 0.5. And then I'll also do, let's say, minus one, just so it moves down a little bit. 
and I'll size the content again so it's in the middle. Then I'll increase the size of the text to 100 and then maybe change this to point minus 0.5 like so. Actually, I'll put it back to minus 1. So this is how we can create a very, very basic main menu. Again, I have another video going into more detail and more customizations and everything like that. But this is a nice basic one. Now, what you would ordinarily do is add in an image behind all of this to create that. But what we want is the 3D scene. So we can just leave it like this. Like this, we have a transparent background, which is what we want. So we see the 3D scene behind it. So if I go back to my original one here, it's the exact same as you can see. I have this image here. So what I will do is delete this image. I also have a background blur on here, which you can have or delete. I just had it over the image. What I'm going to do is probably delete this as well. So now I have the exact same thing in here as well. So you can see we basically recreated it perfectly like so. Now what we'll do is we'll go back into our main menu map. And if you don't already have one of these, you're going to make sure you want to have a separate map for your main menu. So if you don't have one, you can go to File, New Level, and just select empty level and make sure to save it as your main menu map. And then in here, we're going to go to this button up here and open the level blueprint. And in here, we want to make sure we're showing our main menu. Because at the moment, if we were to just press play, it won't actually show anything. It would just be a black screen. So what we want to do is hold down P, left click to get event begin play. Or if you've already got it, just go to where it is. Out of this, we're going to create widget. And this widget is going to be our main menu. So we'll do W underscore main menu, the one that we created earlier. Out of the return value, we will add to viewport. So this is going to add it to our screen. Then we will right click and get player controller. And out of this, we're then also going to set input mode UI only. Connect that in after this with the in widget to focus being our return value of the create widget. I'll double click this just to get some root nodes and keep it looking nice and organized. And then out of the get play controller again, we're going to set show mouse cursor, ticking that so it is true so that we have a mouse cursor so we can use it on our buttons in our main menu as well. And we'll compile and save that. And then what we want to do is actually create our scene for the background of our main menu. So like I said in the intro, what I've done is I've just got an asset and an environment pack off of the marketplace, off of fab. So if I unhide everything, you can see that in here. This is one that I believe I have paid for. If not, I got it for free at some point. But, but because of that, I can't have this project file on Patreon. But I will leave a link in the description down below to where you can get this asset pack from as well, if it's one that you like. But once we have that in here, so we have this in our main menu map now. It's not just black. We have an actual environment in here. We're going to go to the add actors at the top and then search for camera. And you want to add in a camera actor like so and this is going to be what the player is seeing through the main menu because we actually need to have a camera because otherwise you're not going to have anything specific to where you want once we have this camera in here we can right click on it and then press pilot camera actor and we can now move this camera to where we want based upon what the viewport is seeing so we can get the exact view that we want for our main menu so for example i could have this view over here this looks quite nice or what i had in the intro was this view down here where this camera is. So we had this. I'm going to do whatever it is that you like. But I think I might do this waterfall over here for this version now. Just so it's slightly different to the intro. Once you're happy with where your camera is. You can press this button up here to stop piloting an actor with the current viewport. And now you can see we have our camera over here perfectly to where we want the view to be. With this camera still selected. We're going to go back into the level blueprint. Right click and create a reference to camera actor. To allow the player to actually see through this, we're going to come out of the Get Player Controller once again and set View Target with Blend with the new View Target being that camera actor like so. Now we want this to be an Event Begin Play as well. So we'll hold down S and left click to get a sequence, connecting that into Begin Play, then 0 going into the Create Menu widget, and then, then 1 going into our Set View Target with Blend like so. And I'll move this over here as well. And that is all we need to do. We're going to hit compile, save, and then if I were to minimize this and hit play, we should see that we now have our main menu on our screen with a 3D environment as our background. As you can see perfectly here, we have our main menu that we just created with the camera view of the environment and the 3D background that we just had as well. So you see I moved my camera here and this is working perfectly now exactly how we set it up. Now obviously I've not got the play options and quick buttons working. 
but I will go over that very quickly. But again, I have a video going over that in more detail. But you can see what we, the purpose of this video was creating a 3D environment background for our main menu. And we have done that perfectly here. This looks a lot nicer and a lot better than just a still image. And again, because it's not a video, we can come in and put anything in the world and it will work perfectly. So we can have characters running around. We can have AI. We can modify this for Christmas if we wanted or for New Year's or for Halloween. Anything we want to do to customize this level, we can do that perfectly and it will update in real time in the main menu because we just have a camera looking at the level. So that is perfect. If I had to stop this real quick, what I can do is go into our main menu and we'll go into it here. If I now press on the play button, scroll all the way down on the right, and then we have events and you can see to see available events, enable the is variable setting for this widget. So what we can do is tick is variable up at the top here for the button, and then we can add on clicked events. And in here, what we can do is simply open level by name. And I think the only level I have in here is demo underscore scene. So you want to make sure you spell it exactly correctly. So if I go into my content browser, content procedural nature pack, you see demo scene like so. And then what we can do is the same for the other buttons. So we'll go back to the designer, select these two buttons here at the same time by holding control and then tick is variable. Go back to the graph as we don't need to do it from there and we can select the, the buttons in here. So I'm not going to do the options, but I'll press quit on clicked. And very simply, what we can do with this event is quit game perfectly like so. So we'll compile, minimize and hit play and quit is going to simply just close and quit the game and then play will open up that other level. So if I were to press play, it's going to take a second to load as it's loading up the new level. And as you can see, it's open at the level. I don't have a player character, so I can't move or anything, but it has opened up the level perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've created a main menu in which we can have the live background 3D environment scene instead of just a single static image to make it look a lot nicer and more immersive with our game. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and our channel a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.